and welcome back to Straight Talk. You're watching uh, Ross and I in studio today and we're discussing a lot of various topics and of recent, before we went to break, we were talking about the Awista lottery and so we do have a poll this yeah, week. Our, the, the poll question this week, uh, and feel free to, to log on to, uh, to our site. Uh, what's the site again? MohawkTV.ca, so www.mohawktv.ca. Yeah. So the, but the poll question is basically, this is it. Is is uh, do you believe that the Mohawk Council is is, is guilty of uh, discriminating against a Wista lottery? Uh, so that's that's straightforward. That seems to be what the case is about. That seems to be what the case is about. So uh, log on to MohawkTV.ca and scroll down to the bottom of the page, and you will be able to see our poll question. Uh, sometimes at the bottom, sometimes at the side. But as soon as you log on, you'll be able to find it on our homepage. With that said, uh, we'll move on. Uh, another another item that's uh, mm -hmm. been ongoing for a little while is uh, uh, discussions between council and segments of the tobacco industry right. about regulations. Mm -hmm. It's been out there a lot in the uh, in the community, and um, from what I understand is that several weeks back there was an open call to all stakeholders to come and participate in consultations and look at how the industry could be further developed and, and if it could be regulated. Um, but since then, there have been several ongoing meetings. From what I understand, they're, they're very positive, but of course, um, at the same time, there, you know, there are a lot of different people in a room with, with different um, beliefs and um, you know trying to regulate an industry that's been existing in this community for so long without regulation so I think it's been a bit of a challenge um, but things are moving along um, but I think you know with all of the is there I think one of the questions I have as a community member is is there a need to really fast track this at this point because of the fact that there seems to be a lot of stories popping up and you know this that are really challenging the jurisdiction of the the trade lately and one of the biggest ones and to my knowledge is rainbow tobacco that you know have had major ma major seizures out west and you know millions of dollars in in products that have been seized yeah. uh, you, you know, know whatever 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 we think locally mm -hmm. um, that, that doesn't really mean much uh, mm -hmm. in other jurisdictions if you go out, if you go out to Manitoba, or if you go out to uh, uh, Saskatchewan or Alberta, mm -hmm. yeah, in Alberta where where the seizures have taken place, I believe uh, uh, certainly the first one was there, and I'm not sure where the second one was, mm -hmm. whether it was in uh, Manitoba. I think, I think it, it was, was in Manitoba. Manitoba yes, just those last jurisdictions. Week, hey, two weeks you know what? They don't really really mm -hmm. care about what Gunwagi's view is about you know mm -hmm. rights and regulation and so on. So they're going to enforce, and they'll enforce it their jur jurisdiction that they believe they have over First Nations within their boundaries as right. well, in the way that they choose to do it, mm -hmm. including using the RCMP uh, to affect those uh, those raids and seizures. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, this is going to come up against, you have, you have a, somebody involved in the trade uh, who is, sing you know, as, as a single hand, Mm -hmm. uh, going up against the governments of uh, Manitoba, the governments of uh, Alberta, the, and and ultimately the government of Canada, mm -hmm. uh, and really, you know, we could sit around and we could say, well, one of the one of the arguments is is that if 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 we, as as uh, as a community through the Mohawk Council, which has you know a table open to discuss such things with uh, Canada and Quebec, that um, it, they have a stronger position if they're regulating it to say get other jurisdictions to respect it. Mm -hmm. Well, that may it may not be, but right. you know they, there seems to be this this kind of an attempt. One thing is certain, and, and uh, is that the industry right now, if there there's a move, if there's any sense of de desperation within the industry to sit down at this point in time to uh, negotiate regulations with the Mohawk Council. 
is that's that's buffered by by the fact that the industry is not what it was five years ago. Right. You know, I yeah. mean, there are a lot of things, little subtle things that have been mm -hmm. happening. Legislation that Quebec has enacted over trucking and things like that right. that have had their their impact. And some of you could even argue that the delays in construction and and, and roads and things like that mm -hmm. have also taken into account mm -hmm. uh, choking off Ganawage and access to Ganawage easy access to tobacco products mm -hmm. uh, as having had effective uh, results as right. far as I what mean, they're doing because the, customers aren't really coming that much yeah so. and i mean uh, you know the construction on the mercier bridge over the last couple of years but especially this summer was just you know insane in terms of the amount of businesses that suffered because of the bridge was you know yeah. not fully functioning and that's not just the tobacco industry that's you know business in general but you know speaking specifically on the you know about the tobacco yeah. industry i mean some some would say that there are a lot of things that happened that just seem very timely in terms I, if, of if, you if know, you were to tell me the, if you were to tell me you didn't believe that the government of quebec or the government of canada didn't take into account uh, the the construction morass in, in quebec mm -hmm. as having a, 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 a a positive impact yeah. on their goals <laughs> yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. strangling the tobacco industry, mm -hmm. I, I think you would be mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's there. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you, it, I sometimes I look at it and I wonder: is it is it is it too little, too late? Mm -hmm. uh, is it almost too late now to do that? You know, because up till up till now, you know, frankly, one of the the biggest beefs that I had with the whole industry is that it was every man for himself, every woman Well, that's for what it, it clearly became about you know? in the long run because there was, you know, there couldn't be consensus on how things could be regulated. And, you know, and a lot of people will say, well, it all, it always boils down to, to money. And the truth is at the end of the day, it always boils down to economy. And I, and I really do believe that a good chunk of the community has the best interests at heart. But then those who don't, you can't control that because, well, there's, oh. no, there's nothing to control or regulate it. And that's where there's a lot of this social animosity that, that takes place. And then businesses are affected. And then you had all of the price parity issues. And then so now we're just seeing, you know, things that have kind of fizzled out because there was a lot of, I don't know if there was a lot of stores that closed, but there was definitely... Stores are closing as we, are as, closing. as we speak. Exactly. So, and now you have, you know, big manufacturers and that, you know, went into retail. And so all of these things are, they need to be addressed. They need to be discussed. And it's, you know, it, it needs to be a community driven process. But I think sometimes for the, for the average, and, and I can stick myself into that category, the average community member who is not really connected to the tobacco industry in terms of business or, I mean, I have family members that are involved in it and, and I have had family members that are involved in it, but I never really understood it. So I think that as an average community member, a lot of times when I read things or, you know, my input is limited because I'm not really affected but I, I have thoughts on the process and I do have thoughts about how it could be regulated so then where does that leave us for all the community members who aren't uh, involved like where can we put our input I guess if you will yeah. is it at these meetings and would we be welcomed well yeah, because, on, on some level you know, we're, um, we are all involved whether we whether we're directly involved or not. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have family who have family members who work, have worked in the industry, mm -hmm. and that was the only job that was around for them, and right. suddenly that job is no longer there for them, mm -hmm. then that, that affects us all. Um, yeah, and I, and I think people have to consider too that there are a lot of people in this community, the, some of the bigger manufacturers or even people who own stores, they have invested personal money and this is their job and this is their economy and I think you you know there needs to be a fine line between somebody coming in and telling these people how to run their businesses when they themselves don't really have the knowledge of running a business or what it takes to be in that business so I think that there needs to be a differentiation between stakeholders yeah. and and non-stakeholders if you will yeah. in in the best interest of the community yeah. so that that I guess we'll hear more about that too yeah uh, <laughs> as we'll, things develop uh, yeah 
Um, with that, uh, we'll wind things down, but uh, mm -hmm. a couple other lighter things we could talk about mm -hmm. uh, as we go out for this week's edition. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, just to kind of uh, clear up the show, um, some of the things that are happening that uh, are in going on in the community that I think are really exciting is that uh, last weekend, the new Twilight Saga movie series opened, Breaking Dawn. And there's probably a lot of community members uh, that are, you know, really involved in, in watching this series, but, um, or this, this saga, if you will. And um, I went to see it the other day with a friend of mine. And I really do love the Twilight series. I'll admit it. <laughs> and I've actually read I, the books and, yeah. you know, and I just find it intriguing. Anyways, what I thought was really great was to see Alex... Uh, Rice, you know, from Ganawage on screen at playing the role of Sue Clearwater, and I had actually seen her in the second part. But she didn't have a speaking. She didn't role. have a speaking role. This this time she had a speaking role. Yeah. But I mean, it didn't matter if it was speaking, non-speaking. I think just seeing her, and you know, if you're in our age group in the 30s, early 40s, you've grown up with Alex. You know, you've known her, and and um, you know, I remember when she went out to Hollywood years ago when she you know, was so um, adamant about going out and pursuing her career and she left and and I remember just thinking, wow, you know, that's 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 so great and, and being in awe. So now all these years later to see her in, you know, as part, and I know she's done a lot in her career, and um, but to be a part of a movie that, the, it's huge, it's a huge deal. Yeah. And, you know, it was, I felt so proud of Gunawage and, and Alex to see her on the, the big screen like that. And I just think that, you know, it shows that here in the community, we have so much to be proud of. And there's so many people that do so much for Ganawage in the arts and in business. And sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that because we're so wrapped up in all of this other social, you know, politics or politics, if you will, that these little, these things that are actually big things don't get as much attention because, you know, we're, they're more underplayed. So I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to... Alex Rice and you know say congratulations yeah, congratulations and, uh, and if you have a chance to go see them but movie. that shows though I mean mm -hmm. this is like a, if this is the breakout thing or for mm -hmm. her how long it takes to become an overnight sensation right she's, she's been she's been uh, paying her dues now for, uh, a, for long a, long time. Time, <laughs> a long time long uh, time yeah yeah so good good for Alex yeah. uh, and it's nice you know what's nice to know is that it demystifies this whole Hollywood thing she has a house mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. She has relations here. You know, she's yeah, a person she's had here. Her daughter here. You know? and, I'm yeah. not sure Angelina Jolie really exists. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you, if you happen to bump into Alex, she'll say hello to you. She'll yeah. talk to you. You know how are you? So, yeah, so good, of good for Alex. Uh, every bit of success to yeah. her and the series. Although I admit I've never watched one. <laughs> I'm going to drop it off at your house now. <laughs> oh, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's it for this week's <laughs> program. We hope you enjoyed the show. And of course, you're always welcome to give us your feedback. Uh, you know, call us on the news line, 632-6397, or send us an email at mohawktv at hotmail.com. And uh, if there's something that you would like us to discuss here on the show, let us know, and we'll definitely put it on our agenda. So uh, that about wraps it up. And don't forget the poll. Yes, mohawktv.ca. Head over there, check out our website. You can also check out all of our shows. They're uploaded on the website, we also have staff bios and things like that. So check out our website. It's pretty cool. It was designed by uh, Jessica Deer. And, uh, uh, you know, we're always looking for feedback on that. So we hope you uh, enjoyed everything here on today's program. And uh, ona giwahi. Ona. Kanyak ke haga thadi adrast ke yerniga hiado zewa de roro.